It's uh, 4, 4, 4 25. Uh, thank you for being here, all of you. Also, uh, Debbie Edelstein. Do I pronounce that right? It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do it out of Okay. Uh, Debbie is, is so kind to come up here from uh, Watford County. Uh, she is with the uh, assessor's office. And she is going to, before we go into the actual uh, meeting today, she is going to uh, take the oath of office for Commissioner, the uh, former Commissioner Wilmot. Let me go ahead, what do we have to do? Actually, probably the easiest way is why don't you both stand at the same time and you can take it together. Good, let's take it together. <laughs> so if you'll say I and state your name. I stand Riffle. I Jeffrey Wilmot. If you'll repeat after me, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. I will support, support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution, Constitution of the United States, States, and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution and laws of the State of Washington. Of the State of Washington. And that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially perform and discharge, perform and discharge the, duties the duties of the office, the duties of the office of Whatcom County Fire District Five. Whatcom County, County Fire, Fire District, District Five. And in your case, Mr. Ruffle, the Commissioner Position 1. Commissioner Position 1. And for Commissioner Position 3. If you go ahead and say that as well. You have to repeat it. The uh, Commissioner, so, oh, that's right, Commissioner Position 3. That's the Commissioner Position, position 3. Okay, in and for the County of Whatcom. In and for the County of Whatcom. State of Washington. State of State Washington. Washington. According to the law. According to the law. And the best of my ability. And the best of my ability. Great. If you'll just each sign your oath, then I will attest to it as well. And we'll get it on record down at the office, at the auditor's office at my office in Bellingham. I just need it. It's on your shoulder, Commissioner. Well, I've got another one here. <laughs> and then I'll give you back these for the record so you'll have them after we've reported them. My apologies for delaying your meeting. I appreciate the hassles you must have with crossing the border repeatedly. It must be how many times a day? As <laughs> <laughs> few as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, we all kind of people come up here. Um, this little housekeeping note, we have coffee, tea, and cookies over there. And water, please help yourself. <coughs> it's for all to enjoy here. Also, we have uh, um, audio-visual uh, technician in the room here, uh, Assistant Chief Shields. So if everybody who is talking today here in this room, if you want to speak up a little more than usual, that might be helpful because we only have one microphone. Is that correct? Correct now. That's correct. Okay, then we'll start off with the. Uh, uh, we did the oath of office. Well, you're stuck for another six years, uh, Mr. Wilmot. Excuse me? You're stuck for another six years now. Uh, yeah. Then, <laughs> two years for you. Two years for me. Okay, election of officers. We need to uh, do the appointment of chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. And also the appointment of, a financial, of the financial manager. I'm going to say a financial manager, but I, mean, I think we only have one available. Suzanne Kendry, are you willing to do that again for all of you? Yes. That's nice. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to nominate at this time Stan Riffle to the position of chairman. Yourself in the position of vice chairman and, uh, and secretary. Okay. My nomination goes out of, of admiration for you, and I think you handled one of the most difficult years that uh, this fire station I've ever, ever seen, barred out, better than ever. So I thank you for your, your 
service. Appreciate it. Mr. Uh, as, as a matter of discussion, would prefer it remain the same with Bill Mercy as chairman. And I'm very happy to take assistant chairman but, uh, or vice chairman. That, that's my discussion, but I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, we're the main pass for you now. <laughs> um, I think, as your chairman, I would like to do it one more year. I think by that time we are on solid ground and solid footing. And uh, I have, by, by nature or by, by, by amount of years, I have, the, I, mean, I guess, the most experience here. Um, I'll accept that position as chairman again. Uh, not because I feel better, Mr. Wilmot, simply because there's a bit more experience and I think we should utilize that. Uh, but give Stan, or you, uh, a bit more time to roll into that position if you still wish to do so next year. Um, are we ready for a vote? Or you want to discuss it some more? Or we put a motion on the floor? There's a motion on the floor, I'll put it on the floor. Okay. Yeah, then I would make a motion to reappoint our current chairman, Bill Mersing, to remain as chairman. I'm very happy to include in my motion that Jeff Wilmot be the assistant chair. Okay. And I accept. Second? I accept. So you will be the second there on that motion? Yes. Okay, I have a vote. Aye. 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 Motion passed. Unanimously. Yes. <laughs>
are, are the best that we can find in a small community. Uh, they're there to help and God are they do. They help people. Uh, it, it, it's not believable. It's maybe good to you. You're the motivator here, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you do a good job. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I would like to express um, our sincere thanks and appreciation to this fire department as well. We had a recent experience and there is the professionalism and the uh, manner in which they perform their duties is absolutely outstanding. And Ed and I really want to, to thank them all because they're, they're all great. Thank you very much. Kind words, we need more like that. Very nice. Uh, approval of the minutes of last month, last year. I have read the minutes and would make a motion to approve them. I would second Any further discussion on that? Vote on that? Aye. Aye. Aye, too. That's unanimously again. Next item. That would be uh, Suzanne, financial manager. Go ahead. Um, the current month payables total $25,003.46, which includes a few items to point out. Um, volunteer payouts that are included in the warrants total $3,721. This reflects December activity. There's a payment to Puget Sound for electricity for $1,355.19. A payment to Ray Davidson for training for $1,125. A payment on the U.S. Bank Corps credit card to Best Buy for $2,912.44. And that was for two computers, software, and virus protection. There was also a payment to Crozen Uniforms for uniforms for $2,711.01, as well as a payment to WC FARS for our 2014 FARS assessment. We also received an invoice from Watt, the Whatcom County Auditor for election expense of $616.53. I also have a request to cancel warrant 929639 to Western State Design, issued November 26 of 13. This was a double payment. Payroll for December totals $11,447. This represents one month's salary for Chief Carlton in the amount of 416667 one month salary for Assistant Chief Shields in the amount of $2,583. There was one meeting for three commissioners and the secretary had one meeting. Volunteer payouts for December in payroll totaled $4,385. Um, just to head you up, the reports for December that come from the county will not be here till pretty close to the end of January. That's the process. Um, they have a tremendous amount of work to do for year end. Um, so those reports don't get to us uh, very timely. So our financials will be late. Um, the auditor came last week for a visit to have a look at our facility. We were pleased to have her as no other auditor has ever been to visit. She is in correspondence with you commissioners with your entrance letter that you got, I'm assuming you got, um, and with Chief Carlton and me on ongoing inquiries. She anticipates the audit should be over by the end of January. So we require motions to approve the warrant request covering current month vouchers, a request to avoid a warrant, and the current month payroll. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. Should that be three separate motions then? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. don't mind. 
Can I, can I ask a question real quick before you want? Yes. Sure. Uh, Ray Davidson, what, what kind yeah. of training? Uh, Ray Davidson is a uh, captain in Norfolk Fire Rescue. Uh, he came up and conducted a National Fire Academy course, which is Incident Safety Officer. And uh, we had uh, eight to ten of our members go through the Incident Safety Officer course, and they're certified within that uh, rank. Can I ask that uh, that be inserted in the minutes? It makes it a little more clear over time you know, who, what we're doing. Sure, absolutely. We need uh, a motion. <coughs> yeah, we need a couple. Of them. Okay, I, whoever wants to make them. I'd make a motion for current month payables to be approved in the amount of twenty-five thousand three dollars and forty-six cents. One motion. Good. Have a second. Second. For the discussion. Vote, please. Aye. Aye. I too, so that's unanimous. And then I'd make the next motion uh, to approve the cancellation of warrant 929639 to Western State Design. Okay. Second. Discussion? Votes? Aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Go ahead. I move to accept the payroll for December total of 11447 and no cents. Second. I'll second. Second. For, um, for the discussion. Aye. And aye. I vote aye, perhaps unanimous. That vote for aye. Okay. Yeah, That's it. Said, one other thing on that. You said the auditor came for a visit and she's going to. She is in correspondence with the commissioners. I have had nothing from her. Okay, well, she, you will. She, uh, and I don't know if it's going to be by mail. I thought it was going to be by email because I gave her uh, all three of you uh, commissioner email addresses. And she was going to send you an entrance letter, okay, which I'm not exactly sure what an entrance letter, <laughs> letter consists of, but have, have, <coughs> Either one of you received anything? No, I have no questions. Okay, well, maybe it's coming by mail, or maybe her process is... Uh, usually the last two ones I've been involved in uh, were by email. Yeah. Well, she, email, she said she wanted to send you three, uh, the entrance letter, and requested your email addresses. So, it's coming. Okay. Which auditor is the state or the state auditor? Yeah. yeah. It was by a week ago, I think, right? Yeah, a few days back. Yeah. Very well. She's yeah. auditing uh, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, Great. Next one. Correspondence. Uh, we have a number of correspondence in uh, the month of December. <coughs> One of my Christmas cards, thank you cards. So the first card that you'll have is from the community center along with a letter uh, from Mark Robbins as well. Uh, he was here last month and stated that we helped uh, do Christmas lights on uh, the community center. The next uh, card that we received is from Airlift Northwest, uh, just thanking us as well. Okay. Dennis Auto Repair sent us a Christmas card. And then we also got a Christmas card from Prospect Dispatch, it is the communication center for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief report, go ahead, Chief. So my chief report for January 2014, uh, which covers December of 2013. Point of information, uh, the calendar sold out uh, that we put together, so we purchased 200 calendars of our um, hydrant uh, painting contest over uh, last summer. Again, we had 148 hydrants that were individually painted, uh, none uh, two alike. And uh, this year coming up, we have a 110, roughly 110 left. So it's amazing that we have 258, 259 hydrants here on the point. 
I drove every single one last summer to take pictures, and I got 148, but I drove 258. So we have more on order. Uh, we have right now standing orders for uh, over 50 more uh, with people that have come through the office. Again, they're $20, and uh, $10 of that is used to uh, go back to the cost of the calendar, and the money after expenses will go to benefit the community. And that's sponsored through the Volunteer Firefighters Association as well. Uh, we're looking into bathroom fixtures for a female bathroom upstairs and uh, looking at restructuring of the kitchen and the shower. So we currently have a really teeny tiny shower up there, a big bathroom. We're looking at moving the wall. Uh, how much hot water do we have in that little storage thing? Ten gallons. Uh, we have ten gallons for you guys of hot water uh, and gals to take showers upstairs. So we're looking at maybe an always hot uh, system. Uh, we're just we're going out right now, just looking at what's available, or a larger hot water tank, so our firefighters don't uh, run out of hot water when they're trying to take showers over the weekends. And uh, again, we have some damaged cabinets up there. Uh, that cabinetry has been in there for a long, long time. Just the building, building. In the kitchen, and uh, trying to make more room for those who serve this community over the weekends and during the week. We only have one bathroom upstairs currently. <clears throat> there is another. Uh, there's a bathroom that's fitted with the piping and everything else, we just need fixtures, and that would become a designated female uh, restroom when we have a female firefighter on duty. Uh, otherwise, it can be used by, uh, or between the eight male firefighters that might be here as well. So we're looking into that. We had a record call year in 2013. Uh, we ended it with 180 calls at the end of the year. That's 35 calls over 2012. So it looks like we're getting big, uh, busier. Uh, it's interesting that uh, our EMS calls were, or medical calls were 93 out of that 180. So we're about 50% with what we require as in uh, special classifications, fire classifications, and then EMS. So we're still just over uh, the majority of what we do is medical. We currently have five EMT students and five four advanced EMT students being trained. Uh, we are sending them through uh, members within the organization. Brand new members, this is not the members that just graduated last year. This is a new group and uh, they're going through the school out of Idaho which is the same uh, training group. It's online training and uh, they're the same training group that sponsored the Shaw Island EMT class that the last group participated in. Uh, the nice thing about this is is that I'm the host of this training so they're coming out here uh, from Idaho in February to do a long weekend of skills training for us and then uh, the nine people who are within this training at this point will travel there in May to test out at the national registry level within their skills. So they'll be taking a little road trip at the end of May, but uh, everybody's looking forward to that. So just to express what the difference between EMT and uh, advanced EMT is, uh, the advanced EMTs is the middle level uh, in the state of Washington and most states that you have EMT, advanced EMT, and then paramedic. The advanced EMTs are going to be able to start IVs, give more advanced medications, handle diabetic emergencies, uh, give medication that reverses uh, narcotic overdoses, uh, those types of things, prior to rendezvousing with a paramedic, or actually handling the call completely on their own and putting the paramedic unit back in service, allowing that to go to more serious calls. So it's the middle step. It provides a bigger and better service for the community uh, when we don't have a paramedic uh, on the point due to meetings or off staffing. So uh, by June, July, we'll have uh, five new EMTs within our ranks and uh, we'll have four of the current EMTs that we have trained to the advanced level. <clears throat> Apparatus, engine 58, uh, nothing to report. 5802, nothing to report. Battalion 58, nothing to report. Um, although I want to add to that that we still have to get it down to uh, have it looked at uh, from the NBA uh, that happened and uh, to get it assessed. Utility 5802, we replaced the battery. Uh, and it's 858, nothing to report, 85802, nothing to report, and Chief 58, nothing to report. We have a roster of 45 members. We lost three members um, in December to career hirings on the Canadian side. Uh, so we've replaced those, we've replaced two of those members. We have 31 Canadian members, seven Point Roberts, and seven county members. We have two paramedics on staff, and within uh, the medical, we have 17 EMTs, including two advanced EMTs currently. Volunteer hours for the month of December total 2010. Volunteer payroll, if everybody was getting paid, was $8,105. Combined chief hours, uh, I worked 242.5 hours 
Assistant Chief Shields worked 164.5. Believe it or not, that's in December uh, with Christmas. I was here Christmas Day. I was here Christmas Eve. Well, I wasn't here Christmas Day. I was here Christmas Eve. But I was also here New Year's Eve, uh, along with another firefighter that came in to help me staff the station. Uh, we, had, we had a few get-togethers uh, around the point that evening. So total chief hours was 407 <laughs> incidents. And the month of December, we had 10 calls. Uh, three of those were EMS calls. We had one transport by Airlift Northwest. We had one no transport, and we had one transport to Walk Medic One. We had no public assists. We had six fire classifications, four hazardous burns, one electrical wires down, and one chimney fire. Uh, another call was a sheriff activity here at the station. That completes my chief's report. Thank you. Unfinished business. One item the pit the walking glove. And I'm sure we, uh, for those who were here last month, we were talking about uh, lighting of the parking lot. Um, Chief, do you want to add a few things to that? Sure. So I was able to contact Airlift Northwest, uh, which is, again, the parking lot is an emergency landing zone uh, for critical patients, both trauma and medical. And it's one of the landing zones, obviously, the helicopter can land pretty much in any uh, open space. But uh, they do need uh, adequate space in between electrical wires and uh, buildings and everything else. So it's been a landing zone for a number, number of years. And uh, the lighting was replaced a number of years ago to the down lighting that we currently have out there. And they recommend uh, limited lighting in parking lots. Uh, nothing that streams outwards uh, at a horizontal line or definitely upwards because it can blind the helicopter pilots. So if you remember last summer as well, uh, or the last part of 2012, I don't remember off the top of my head when PSE came up, they changed out all of our lighting inside the fire station and also out in the parking lot to more efficient uh, bulbs to uh, help us save on energy. And uh, that's something to consider too. So talking to uh, Airlift Northwest, um, having conversations with uh, other uh, people uh, that fly, including uh, Fadi Samaha, who's a member here as well. Uh, when it comes to aerospace and safety for them, the less lighting, the better. Now, when we're talking about how can we benefit those who have disabilities to help them uh, get back out to their vehicles uh, after a meeting if it is dark, again, we can uh, assist them personally with flashlights. Uh, we do have apparatus that doesn't cost the district uh, really anything to pull out, and we have large lights on those that we can light up the entire parking lot with. So at this point, I'm not recommending that uh, the lights in the parking lot be changed out to anything brighter, uh, just because uh, the number one use uh, for the parking lot uh, during an emergency would be to have airlift be safe and safely land to pick up the patients. Thanks. Um, either Commissioner, any, any comments? Well, <laughs> I think I'll go and agree with the chief. No additional lighting is necessary. If we find it's necessary at a later time, we can bring it up. But uh, at this particular point in time, I think we have offered, you know, for anybody that's physically challenged, we've offered uh, reasonable accommodation, and that's the federal wording for American Disabilities Act. So. I would go along with doing nothing at this time. Commissioner Billman. I think the question is one of uh, personal safety. And if the lighting is, could be better but isn't bad, uh, I think we've done all we need to do. Uh, but I, I want to stress not that we need to do, but that we would do as reasonable people to protect our visitors and Again, individually, we can uh, assist people uh, physically, you know, back out to their vehicles, and uh, we can have one of our bright flashlights, which is a nominal cost or no cost to the district whatsoever. I'm happy to continue looking in and having this on next month's agenda into additional lighting that would be more projected down to the ground versus out into the parking lot, uh, because that's where it can't be projected to, uh, but somehow be able to light 
up the outside door, uh, possibly better without uh, getting into the constraint of a helicopter landing at night. One the thing that I was thinking of when we were talking about a helicopter was bringing the lighting down on Any lights shining up, though, is what we can't have. I'm talking about those lights that... that yeah. Yeah. Pathway lighting. Yeah. I mean, there might be... I, I see, I see what not, you're saying. Not, the idea is not to light up the parking lot, right. but to identify the pathways. And you, you know, I've seen a lot of exterior landscape lighting where the pole has a, a light fixture about 24, 30 inches off the ground and spreads light out on a circular basis on the ground. Sure. It probably would be better than what's there now for the helicopter. <clears throat> well, what I have to consider though is the, the parking lot. I can't have poles out in the parking lot. One, because the whole parking lot is traveled through. And I can't have poles lining out to the handicapped spot because, again, that is a pathway for our fire vehicles to come uh, in regular traffic. So I, I'll be happy to look into maybe something that's flatter. Uh, that would spread out to the ground that we are capable of driving over that will handle the weight of our apparatus But it's more of a flat dome type of, uh, Yeah, right flat dome type of lighting that we could possibly put in the parking lot instead yeah. So Mr. Chairman, all I want to do is sort of keep the subject alive uh, There's no urgency obviously, but you might want to touch base when we're I'm happy to have it on the agenda next month too and see what I come up with Okay, now, I'd like to throw in my two bits here. Having so much experience in aviation myself, there's nothing worse than landing horizontally and vertically on a, uh, on a strip or a parking area uh, when it's raining and the lights reflecting. Okay, I want you to keep it in mind, it rains quite a bit here. Uh, I put safety uh, public safety completely and 100 percent ahead of uh, an individual uh, uh, safety. But that might sound crude. However, this is a fire department. This is a department that has, uh, at times, I'm guessing once or twice, I will say four, five, six times a year. We we have the helicopter over here. I'll be damned if I'm going to. Any, in any way obstruct the helicopter from landing here and take off again safely, if I can prevent it. I'm also totally aware that we cannot please everybody. You know, so be it. That's just the world. I think we have done enough. Although I agree with Mr. Wilmot that we, we may want to look into it once in a while. Maybe there's a new concept coming and uh, being invented with lighting that we don't know anything about yet at this time. But at this time, I have to go along with uh, Commissioner Riffel. And I'd like to close the book on this. Although if somebody has a better idea at any time, please bring it up. Um, I've seen more, I'd like to see more on the floor that we have uh, concluded this study at this time and that there will be at this time no additional lighting installed. If somebody of the public or anybody else requires individual assistance, we have a number of apparatus with beautiful lighting up there that you can temporarily pull out of the station, light up the, light up the park and look like Christmas here. I think if we need to, we can use that. In short, that's my argument. Well, this would be then a motion to I, take. I would, if you if you care to make a motion, if not, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to table this item. Would that be correct? Um, I'd go one step further, Mr. Leffel. That'd be me, but then that's only me talking. But with that, I mean is that we at this time have. have uh, exhausted the lighting uh, uh, questions of the parking lot at night, uh, and, and that at, in, at a future date, when technology improves, and, and there's no doubt that will happen. <coughs> that 
we may revisit the uh, the uh, the whole issue. I'd like to step in with another five cents. Sure. We can. I, would, I, would, I agree with your your decision to close the item out for the weekend. But I think we need to take some. I would like to see some action taken rather than just look into it and decide to pump for that. And, and the, the suggestion was inspired by you. It doesn't involve you in installing lighting. It involves store, developing signage. We should at two or three exits to the firehouse have a sign like they do in gas stations saying if you need assistance in, in crossing the parking lot, just get in touch with someone in the fire department. We could make those signs here, and we could put them over there, over there, and uh, we will have given notice, and we will have given the radiation to anyone who needs it, and we won't have to talk about lights again. Chief, that's, that's fairly easy to do, right? That's There's easy. a sign there, and a sign there, and off we, went, off we go. Uh, it's up to the individual to, to uh, ask uh, for assistance, so I think that's a good idea. And, and Again, we have people here um, every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, they may not be in the office, they may be out on the point or on the call, uh, so the phone may go to answering uh, service, but overall we have somebody here to take those, return the phone calls, uh, emails as well. Uh, this has been stated at other uh, commissioner meetings uh, in 2013, that anybody that needs assistance is welcome to uh, contact us. We'll meet them in the parking lots, we'll assist them in, and we'll assist them back out. Uh, again, our trucks have an extreme amount of uh, power when it comes to lighting up areas, and we can also do that. That's very, very easy for us to do. So I'm happy to get signs. Uh, that would be in the main office. That's where the majority of people are going to come. Have a sign in here as well uh, that states that if you need any assistance from this organization, uh, please contact us or email us uh, with uh, getting to the meetings to and from. Okay, from the parking lot. I don't think we're going to start a taxi service uh, to help people get here. <laughs> the, re the reason why we have the recording now is so people who on bad weather days that if they don't want to venture out, they are uh, capable of getting online uh, from any accessible computer and these will be posted uh, to a link and they can watch the entire meeting if they're unable to get here as well. Why, why don't we just be proactive and if we have lights, after the meeting, somebody turned the lights on. Yeah. Just do it without being asked. That, which is perfectly fine. We can, that can be an expectation of every meeting from this point forwards that if it's uh, dark at the end of the meeting that uh, the lighting will be set up in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, especially for those uh, who have disabilities that are parking in the handicapped spots and we'll assist them to their vehicles. Yeah, just, and then, because I think sometimes it's difficult for people to ask you know, for help, that they would rather avoid that. So I think being proactive like that eliminates that, you know, unless they need to be physically assisted, so. Sure. Thank you for that. very proactive of you to say this. No, but I'd be absolutely right. Yeah, well, I mean, if we have the stuff, use it. Yeah, I agree. Can you do that, Gene? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No problem there, right? Absolutely. No problem. So I'm making... You're good with words, uh, Mr. No, I don't know. This motion together. <laughs> I'm not sure if you require the motion. You haven't done anything. Well, that's the point of the whole table. And make a motion to drop the issue of parking lot, new parking lot lighting, uh, and use our existing equipment instead. Okay. Okay, Michelle, can you work with that? Thank you. Um, further discussion? I guess not, let's talk about it. Um, Move to adjourn. A motion. I mean, a vote, please. A vote? Oh, I need motion. a seconder. Oh, yeah. You want me to second it, or shall I do it? I'm for this motion. Uh, I'm sure I'm happy to second it. I'm, I'm still questioning whether or not any action is taken that requires a motion to undo it. Since, since, it was, since it was on the unfinished business <coughs> and we talked about it again, I think if we make a motion that it's done, then and that we have an alternate way of helping people out, then it's done, out, gone, see you. 
That's what my motion was. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next one is for you, Chief. Uh, district meeting recording policy. Yeah. So uh, we're recording the meetings for the benefit of the public uh, so they can watch the meetings if they're able to um, come to the scheduled time. And also to make sure that things are documented correctly, uh, that uh, what is said at the meeting is uh, recorded and um, heard by all. And this is going to help us make sure that uh, things are reported correctly uh, about the district of this, about the business of this district. So um, at the end of this meeting, uh, we'll go through the process. Uh, it'll be probably a day or two before we are able to link it up to uh, the website, wcfd5.com, and then have a link that will be able to go to the entire recording of the meeting. Now the policy guides us in uh, why we're doing the recording and what rights we have as uh, a district or you have as commissioners when it comes to uh, the recording uh, of open public meetings. Uh, when I spoke to Brian Stern, which is the district council, the, the recording of the meeting does not uh, supersede written um, Written record. So written record still has to be taken. Uh, they are the, considered the official of the district, but the recording supplements that as well. But there has to be, uh, the, the written uh, record does not go away just because we're recording the meeting. So if you want to, I can read this policy uh, to you. I did send it out to you. Um, I think there might be one change that uh, was not in the document uh, that I had Brian, uh, that I spoke to Brian about and changed. And that was procedure number five. So item number five, which states, uh, it previously stated shall be posted. Uh, it does now state that video recordings may be posted to the internet either using the district's website or other commercially available video viewing sites, subject to any editing as provided in paragraph eight of this policy and procedure. Now, the editing, uh, if any editing was, supposed to, was going to be done, would be governed by uh, the, I think number eight is incorrect, so I'm going to have to have him correct that. It's actually paragraph seven. The board reserves the right to edit the video recording of a meeting prior to public dissemination in order to avoid possible legal liability to the board, the district, and the district employees. The board chair, in consultation with legal counsel, will determine in her or his sole discretion, although the chair will seek input and advice from the board where practical. Which portions, if any, of its video recordings will be edited prior to public dissemination? Examples of the type of statements that would be subject to editing are abusive, obscene, and potentially defamatory statements by those in attendance at the meeting. So that's the right of the board uh, prior to being uh, placed for public viewing. Uh, this uh, policy also governs the RCWs. Uh, stating that no video recording shall be made or will be made during executive sessions under RCW 4230.110, or those meetings or portions of meetings close to the public under RCW 4230.140. Thank you, Chief. Commissioners, anything uh, you want to talk about, anything you want to add, anything you want to take away? Are you happy with the policy? I'm, I'm happy with the policy. Yes. Read apparently in um, paragraph five, you're changing the word may to shall. No, it, it went from shall to may. Oh, okay. Which gives us the option versus an, an absolute. Okay. That's all I had. Otherwise, it looks good. Thank you for putting it together. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the other purpose of this uh, purposes would be assisting in the preparation of the official meeting minutes. Uh, ensuring decisions and discussions are ac accurately recorded and disseminated to the public, and verifying the accuracy of the minutes prior to approval by the board. So board members would also be able to uh, watch the meeting after it's posted and uh, have any questions that they may have uh, with the minutes that were taken before approval at the next minute, uh, at, the, at the next meeting. Good. I think it's a good idea. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to say again, we have coffee, tea, coffee.
cookies and more cookies. <laughs> They're very good cookies, I just went out. <laughs> So please take some home or enjoy yourself and uh, after the meeting talk to us a little bit if you want to. Uh, that's about it. Anything else folks? I'd like to thank Debbie for making the effort to come all the way up here. Yeah. Yes. I don't know about you, Jeff, but she uh, in her office helped during the election process. And to come up puts a real cap on this. Thank you. And staying the whole meeting. Thank you. <laughs>